Today is a very special day here in Nairobi, Kenya, because we are not only meeting as women who are leaders, but today we are making demands on the day where, when we know that it's been 10 years since the promulgation of the Kenya Constitution. I'm excited to be part of this process because I'm coming from Zimbabwe. We took a chunk of the Kenyan constitution when we were developing our constitution, which uh, came into effect in 2013. And how do you then deal with women fighting women in political spaces? It's a conversation we are not having. And again, remember, we are not going to expect women to behave the same way. We have women who have been raised in patriarchy. The only thing they know is the wrong things that we have been indicating here. They only know that a woman must elbow another man or woman in order to be in space, in that space. They only know that for me to rise, I must pull another person down. They only know that for me to get here, I must lie, I must backstab, I must be violent. That is the narrative around which they have been raised in politics. And unlike some of us who are in civil society, I have been educated on how to deal differently. But we are making presumptions that there are women who have not been raised in that manner. And so we are suddenly finding ourselves in a very difficult situation. When another woman attacks me, when I fight back, the men use the excellent wording they use. When a man fights another man, they are fighting for power. When a woman fights me and I'm fighting back, you are jealous. Yes, women must lead and must lead at the forefront. Do you agree with me? Yes. yes. And we must make sure that we do all what it pertains or what it's required for us to be able to do that. First of all, I want to appreciate those that are, have been ahead of us, those that started the women movement in Kenya, those that put the trend on course, those that fought the battles that they did for the women to be recognized as leaders in Kenya, those that sacrificed their personal and their family lives to make sure that the women movement is present in Kenya, those that have held the theoretical umbrella in the training institutions in Kenya. They use terminology that are supposedly negative, that if I'm fighting you because you are fighting me, I'm just jealous of you. But you are fighting a political space, and I would want to encourage us that once we live here, that is a, a point we need to explore as the women's sector. How do we deal with a new dynamic that we never had before? We are only busy with the patriarchy. But what about women finding themselves in a new space? It's not a negative thing. I think it's a positive thing. It's just that we need to know how to manage it. Personally, I face many challenges around that, how to deal with a situation. I've been very vocal about issues of patriarchy and dismantling patriarchy. But then suddenly, I find a situation where it is not patriarchy fighting. I am having a fight with women. How do I deal with that? And that is something we must find a way to deal with. And we deal with it in a manner that the numbers stay and the powerful women stay but that we know how to deal with situations and circumstances like that. The likes of Professor Wajiko Kabira and the likes who have been spearheading the theoretical framework training for women leadership in Kenya, those that sacrifice their husbands and sacrifice their families to be seen and to be visible, to, re to place the women of Kenya where we are today. Indeed, as a chair of Kewopa, who is recently uh, elected, I pride myself with the, with the revamp of the women movement in Kenya. And all we can do to make them proud is to make sure that we sustain that, to make sure that we keep the fire burning, and to ensure that all women who have the desire to fit in the gap have been given the opportunity to do so. I want to appreciate those that were ahead of us who started off Kewopa. Kewopa was started by about three members of parliament. And with time, Kewopa has grown to accommodate more than 95 members of parliament. When I say members of parliament, right now, noting that we have two houses, the National Assembly and the Senate, um, I mean both of them. 
Uh, during the formation in the 8th Parliament, Kewapa has had uh, uh, initial membership of nine and it has been on the gradual growth. In the 12th Parliament, the current membership comprises of 12, uh, 23 single constituency members. That means single, uh, that those are uh, normal MP representing a constituency. 47 county women members like myself, three elected senators, six nominated members of National Assembly, like Professor Jacqueline, who is with us here, and uh, Prof. Um, Honorable Gatti, who is with us here, and 18 nominated senators, uh, like Senator Musuruve, who is with us here. Kewapa has indeed contributed towards the realization of family bills, including Marriage Act 2014, the Matrimonial Property Act 2013, the Protection Against Domestic Violence Act, and among other bills. Other key registrations that Kewapa has been on the forefront include the prohibition of FGM, an issue that really has been a challenge, Sexual Offenses Act, amendments that are required, and it's good for me to cite and note that currently we have amendments that are on the floor, uh, which have been um, proposed by, na by none other than myself, to making sure that we, we seal the gaps and the loops that are there on the Sexual Offenses Act to accommodate for delivery of justice through an effective and efficient process. Kewapa has also played a very major role in spearheading the push for the realization of the two-thirds gender principle as proposed by the Constitution Amendment Bill of 2015 and recently the amendment of 2018-2019. Despite all the efforts, honorable members, I'm sure you know this has not passed in Parliament, and I'm sure you know the reasons why we have not been able to achieve that. And I think I want to leave that because I know that 